with a knife video for you. Today we're taking a look at another Best Tech. This is the Best Tech Muskie. It's another of the sort of, you know, liner lock bearing D2 Best Techs that are out there. And there's quite a number of these. Uh, some of them I really like. Some of them, I, you know, I don't feel super drawn to the particular design. But I will say this, all the ones that I've handled, and I've handled quite a few at this point, they, at the very least, I can say the construction tends to be on point. Uh, flip, flipping, detent, you know, access to the lock bar, all that kind of stuff tends to be pretty reliable. So uh, whatever design you happen to see that you're attracted to, uh, I don't think you're going to go far wrong picking up one of these, you know, $50 Best Techs. If you go over to White Mountain Knives and use my discount code Sharp Stuff. You can save yourself a couple of bucks on that. Ten percent actually is what you'll save. Uh, so that's that's pretty nice, and you can certainly do a little bit better. Make this a little bit more budget friendly, I guess, than it is. Uh, starting off here with size and weight, this is you know maybe on the largish end of the spectrum. Eight and nine sixteenths overall. 3 and 9 sixteenths on the blade. So that's just a hair over nine sixteenths. It's just a little bit over a half an inch. Uh, 4 and 15 sixteenths on the handle, so almost 5 inches here, and you can kind of see how this sort of has this horn almost on it, so I don't know what that, what purpose that serves. The handle could really be like this and be a bit shorter, but uh, it doesn't do any damage to it or anything, uh, but the closed length then is going to be just a hair under 5 inches. Uh, another number that's notable here is the grip area, so from here to here, you've got a ton of space. Um, this this knife is one of those that just feels very generous in hand and very comfortable as well. Now we'll talk about that more when we get to ergonomics, but you do have a good bit of space there for your fingers. And the weight on this guy is going to be 4.7 ounces. So not, not terribly heavy, uh, especially given the size of this knife. Um, so there you go, size and weight. Um, the, the one thing I will point out here is it's a little thicker. So we've got more than a half half an inch here. I guess I better keep it in frame. Uh, we've got more than a half an inch of thickness here. And while that is, you know, maybe adds a little bit uh, to when you have this knife in pocket, how noticeable it is, because of the contouring, it actually is still very, very comfortable. And of course, the trade-off that you get is when you're gripping this, it's very hand-filling and very, very comfortable. So that is a pretty nicely struck balance, I think, that this knife is able to, to sort of capture there. Moving on to the blade, we have a D2 blade, which is the typical stuff we're used to seeing from these budget Vestex. Uh, really nice, essentially a full flat grind. Like there's a little bit of flat here, but this, this is largely a full flat grind. You got a nice distal taper going on there. And so very fine point. Now this is not, of course, the knife you're gonna wanna, I don't know, drop on the pavement or something like that. Good chance he'll break that point off because it is pretty fine. But as a cutting tool, as a, a tool for, you know, opening packages, getting some fine detailed work done, that tip is useful for that. And overall, the edge is pretty thin and nice. Now that I've fingerprinted it all up, let me just wipe it off a little. I'm only using my shirt rather than a microfiber cloth, so it's not going to be perfect, but uh, better than just leaving my grease all over it. Anyway. Uh, so quite functional blade, D2 steel, just a reminder, if, if you've, you know, if you've watched tons of these videos, you know this, but just in case you're only here for this one, D2 is not going to be a fully stainless steel. It's definitely not bad, okay, but it's not fully stainless. Uh, in terms of functionality on this blade, it works out really, really well. It slices very nicely. As I say, it's not the most tough, durable, crazy, thick blade you've ever seen, but generally speaking, what we want to see out of a blade is good cutting performance, and it certainly provides that. Uh, moving on to lockup and deployment. We've got a liner lock here on bearings. It is flipper deployed, but you can also see that big blade cut out there, and you can, if you get your thumb in there, use your thumb to deploy the blade, and I can get my finger in there and spidey flick this as well. So lots of deployment options there. The detent is pretty nicely dialed in. It's not super, super stiff, but it's certainly stiff enough that if I, you know, if I go ahead and deploy this for you, you can see it deploys there with a bit of authority. Uh, definitely a fun knife to flick and play with while you're, you know, watching TV or reading a book or something like that. Uh, and of course, the, the main thing that I think about when I'm looking at uh, first lockup and deployment is that it locks up very solidly. There's no blade play in any direction, and this is very solid that way. The other thing I consider is how comfortable is this? Am I constantly feeling like it's it's I'm punishing myself whenever I have to open and close the knife? And that is not the case at all. This is very comfortable, very ergonomic in terms of how everything feels, and it's just you know nice and easy and simple, very very comfortable and enjoyable to deploy 
this knife. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about the handle. Again, there's nothing special happening here really. It's it's a particular design. Uh, we've got some nice 3D machine G10 liner lock there, fairly substantial liner lock, which is nice to see. Some internal milling to lighten this thing up. You can take a look in there and see that now. Uh, two position pocket clip and a nice little spacer on this side to sort of hold that space when there's no clip there. One thing that I will point out, and this is pretty common. Now this doesn't affect this going in and out of pocket. I try it multiple times so this knife is pretty good but it would be nice to see flat screws recessed into come on focus into that clip rather than the the rounded heads on those screws which are going to get it in the way a little bit now as i say functionally uh, it's not that big of a deal on this particular knife, but I have seen knives, and we're all aware of knives, where the screws do get in the way and end up making your deep carry clip not really a deep carry clip so uh, not the end of the world, and it works quite nicely in this particular version because they've given you lots of space under that clip. But it's just something to think about if you're putting a knife together uh, or if you're looking at a knife thinking of buying it, how are those screws done? In terms of, you know, the way it's put together, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't have any any issue at all. In fact, uh, G10 Backspacer back there. I will make this note. Uh, the thing that stands out in terms of this handle is that it's quite comfortable. Now, there is this little weird wave detail, <laughs> and I don't really know what to tell you about that, whether that was their effort to make it look like a muskie or, uh, you know, I don't know why this couldn't have just come flat here. I, I don't really understand. But it doesn't take away a whole lot from the knife. It's kind of makes me ask why, but other than me asking why, it's it's completely fine. And so in hand, I have to give this knife a lot of credit. This is a very comfortable knife. So if you're the kind of person who does a lot of work with your knife, especially does a lot of work where you really have to grip and really have to bear down on some stuff, you're going to enjoy this handle an awful lot. Um, so let's get some comparisons here now that we've got the main sort of talking points out of the way in terms of the features of the knife let's see how it stacks up against some other competitive options so there of course is the rat model one and if you're looking for you know a comfortable heavy duty working knife this is of course a very very good option you might want to uh, lean a bit away from this now let me say this recently please fill me in down in the comments but i recently saw some g10 models of the rat one available i'm nearly certain I didn't imagine it <laughs> okay um, and if there's a there's some g10 versions of this out there that's a pretty cool option and certainly something worth considering the steel on these two happens to be the same uh, while we're looking at this uh, one of my favorite best techs is definitely the best tech ascot very impressive knife here comfortable in hand great blade grind still the same steel the action I would say on the ascot is just a little bit nicer um, not not a ton, but it's just a little more refined. And certainly the look, uh, I will say the Ascot is a beautiful knife. So uh, that would be certainly one to consider. It's going to cost you a little bit more. Uh, another knife that's going to cost a little bit more will be the Civivi. This happens to be the Insight. There are a couple of other Civivi options that perhaps you'd want to look at, maybe the Praxis or the Aquila or something like that. Um, but there's th the fact is, this is a, a very, very full portion of the marketplace there are tons and tons and tons of chinese made d2 liner locks with g10 and bearing pivots there's just uh, you know it's insane how many there are and and, and you know what? i'm not that's not a complaint don't take this the wrong way uh, as a knife enthusiast i think that variety is fantastic and the comp competition is fantastic especially for us as users finally i'll throw in a P pm2 there just because people are very familiar with the size and shape of this knife so it's going to kind of give you an idea how this one stacks up in terms of size and cutting edge and all that good stuff uh, what do I think of this knife overall, right? Is this a good knife? Should you be running out and buying it? Um, you know, if you're in the market for uh, something that is not overly expensive, but still highly functional, uh, if you like something that's comfortable in hand, that has a blade that's uh, very functional, high flat grind, if you like a slightly more uh, refined blade that's, that's geared toward being a great slicer, I think you're going to enjoy this. This is definitely a well-done knife. Um, and as I say, there, the fact is, I haven't really handled a lot of best techs that were bad. 
the, you know, I, in fact, none of them stand out as, as having an issue. Maybe when they first came out, there were some that, that were noticeable, but none that I happened to review. So the, pretty well, this sort of $50 Best Tech with the D2 steel and the bearing pivots, there are a bunch of them out there. If you really find yourself drawn to the design, you're probably pretty safe. And certainly if you like this knife and you, you know, feel like this is a really cool knife, which by the way, some of you do. I've had a number of requests to review this. And so, you know, I know there's a few of you out there who really, really think this is a great knife and it is a great knife it's it's comfortable in hand the action is nice the blade is nice it's highly functional it carries well i mean all the things that you really look for in a knife at this price point it delivers and then some so yeah i i have no problem saying yeah if you like this go ahead and pick one up or pick up any of the best techs out there uh use my discount code to white mountain knives to get one he did Justin usually has most best techs in stock and you can save yourself a little bit of money. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will talk to you soon.